All right, so if you had a molecule that was like A bonded to B, and you wanted to know what the bond is like, one of the main things you'd wanna look at is the difference in electronegativity. Um, that's gonna tell you a lot about the properties of this bond. And so here we've got our electronegativity uh, table. So let's take a look at the different kinds of bonds we can have here based on the difference of electronegativity. Um, so we can have a small difference in electronegativity. So this is generally like zero to, to 0.4 difference approximately none of this stuff is kind of exact there's no hard limit we can have kind of a medium difference in electronegativity this is a kind of approximately 0 0.4 to 2 or we can have a large difference in electronegativity and so this would be kind of like greater than 2. So a small difference in electronegativity, that would be something like an atom bonded to itself. So something like an H, H bond, this delta En would be zero because it's the same thing. Uh, another very popular example of a non or a small difference in electronegativity is a CH bond. So if we find C and H here, uh, H is 2.2, C is 2.55, so that's what, 0.35. So we can see that's kind of getting slightly close to the medium, but uh, just under. And so in general, CH is considered a nonpolar bond. Uh, I would like you to know that. Know that CH in general is considered a nonpolar bond. And so when you have this small difference in electronegativity, the bond is called either a pure covalent or a nonpolar bond kind of the same thing. Um, and think about the trends in electronegativity. In order for things to have a small difference in electronegativity, they should be close to each other on the periodic table, um, other than kind of hydrogen. Hydrogen is kind of a weirdo. So kind of close together on the periodic table. Um, and you shouldn't need an electronegativity table to tell whether the bond is polar or nonpolar. You should kind of get a good feel for it. Um, so that could be one of the cases, or they could be the same atom, right? If you have the same atom, you're going to have even sharing because they have the same electronegativity. They're pulling on those electrons by the same amount. A medium amount of electronegativity difference. So, for example, something like uh, HF, right? That difference is 1.8. or something, or probably the most common bond, OH. Definitely know this one, right? OH, that's also a medium difference in electronegativity. This is what's known as a polar covalent bond, right? We no longer have, or we have a difference in electronegativity now, so we have a difference in how hard these nuclei are pulling on these electrons, and so we have uneven sharing of electrons. So when you think about an OH, there's a partial negative on the oxygen because it's more electronegative and a partial positive on the hydrogen. Or you can draw a dipole arrow that looks like that. Or you can even kind of draw your own little electron density map, right? So you could draw the kind of electrons more on the oxygen than the hydrogen. Either of that works. <clears throat> And then finally, when we have a very large difference in electronegativity, something like lithium fluoride, right? Lithium's over here all the way on the left, fluoride is all the way on the right. The difference in electronegativity is about three. So when you get that strong of difference on those pool of the, those electrons, basically one of the atoms just takes the electrons and then you have an ionic bond. So lithium plus and fluoride minus. And so it's not that one bond kind of characteristically fits into one of these nice three neat um, categories. It's some fit exactly into the categories, but there's a lot of stuff in between.
And so here you have this kind of continuum of bond types as we increase the difference in electronegativity, right? So when they're approximately the same, they're equally shared, then they start getting different. Now they're unequally shared. And now they're so different that basically one elect one takes the electrons from the other. And remember, these are not kind of hard boundaries. Nature doesn't exactly do what we tell it to do.